here we go. So thank you for coming. Today is 2nd of February and we are at the weekly, bi-weekly Tinkerbell Contributors Meeting. So thank you for coming. We have a code of conduct that in general can be summarized to be nice to each other and this video is recorded as well. So uh, just as a reminder. Today we have a couple of topics. I the first two are from Dan that we know had a last minute um, call. So I'm not I mean, he wrote me that probably he will be able to join. Um, but in the meantime, I think we can go straight to Jason. So if you, you can take the ride. Yeah, let me go ahead and share my screen because I think it'll be easier to talk about if I'm sharing it. I can find the right one, maybe. This tells me I need to uh, clear out some windows. All right, I'll just share the desktop here. Um, so hopefully this is showing right. Um, so uh, as I was working uh, towards a demo for the Atlanta Kubernetes meetup, I thought it would be great to use um, some hardware that I had laying around the house. And uh, one of the first things I hit was uh, unsupported hardware with OC. And uh, Dan and Gianluca had started work on uh, the Tinky project, I think we're calling it now, for um, a potential uh, lighter weight uh, OC replacement uh, using Linux Kit. And uh, so I gave that a run and, and quickly hit the same issue. So that led into a whole rabbit hole of how do we enable uh, custom kernel building for uh, the Tinky project. And I'm going to walk through that here a little bit. Um, so if you haven't uh, seen this, um, I'll add the link to this into the notes as well. Uh, but this is where the repo sits. I, I assume we'll be moving it over to the uh, Tinkerbell org at some point. Um, but um, there's all the documentation here, the motivation, the architecture, and uh, how, do you, how do you replace OC uh, in the sandbox there. So if you actually want to make use of it, that's the way to do it. And uh, the important part here is if you want to build a custom version of the Linux kit OS, um, you need to run this make disk command. However, that wouldn't actually uh, change the kernel that you're using. Uh, in order to do that, um, in the config here, you need to actually update the image that you're pointing to, uh, but you still need an image to point it to. Um, so Gianluca added this uh, kernel subdirectory here. And uh, what this is, is basically a copy over from the Linux kit kernel, uh, because we have to fork it just slightly. And there's the uh, kernel config in here. Um, now, if you know what you're doing with the kernel config, you can actually go in here and just modify uh, the kernel settings uh, that you need to. Uh, but chances are, if you try to do that, you might end up with a non-working kernel config. Uh, so even if you do modify that, um, it's a really good idea uh, to run this step uh, over here, which is uh, make this uh, kconfig uh, Docker image. And what that does is it basically packages up uh, the kernel sources uh, in a place in a Docker image that has all the tooling that you need. And then you can enter into that um, container and run make menu config. And uh, you can either use menu config to add the configuration that you need to or just run it to load uh, the configuration file that you hand edited and save it so that uh, it's a proper uh, kernel config. And at that point, you can run the uh, make build command for the kernel. That'll create the kernel image, and it'll output the name of that image that you can then use um, in the Tinky YAML file to build uh, the Linux kit um, image that you need uh, to be able to boot on your hardware. Yeah, yeah uh, it's. At this stage, it's weird. We are we are trying to figure out with the Linux kit maintainer uh, how to make it like a little bit easier and less like uh, you know a lot of small bit to copy paste and run. Uh, I'm not sure if they have a use case where somebody wants to make it easier as we would like to, but uh, at some point, I presume. Uh, it will come. Yeah, uh, I didn't did the kernel directory. Then did that. So I just want to, for the record, uh, you know, say, uh, 
give the right ownership to the directory. Um, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I had the same issue with, um, and with OZ back then because we use the same hardware. So I have a few nooks uh, laying around here and uh, there are a few kernel modules missing there. And uh, so I'm good that uh, now it's there. I didn't, the CI CD part is kind of like uh, blocked now for the reason that uh, Jason shared. I mean, I wasn't able to figure out a good end-to-end -end workflows from a kernel to uh, a working image. So there is a couple of steps that I have to do manually. So CI doesn't work yet, or it doesn't work that well as I want it to work. So if you if you want to play with Tinky or with Tinkerbell, I think the what Jason showed is a good way to contribute right now because we didn't figure it out. <laughs> yeah, and I think the longer term goal is to have a kernel uh, and Linux kit image that would support uh, the vast majority of hardware out there, so that ideally you wouldn't have to go through these steps. Um, but I expect that there will always be some user that has some type of obscure hardware. So I think having um, the manual processes will uh, always be needed, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure somebody will want to run Tinkerbell on their PlayStation 3 at some point in the future for unknown reasons. So we'll probably need to ensure that I don't know, the controller support is compiled into the kernel or something random like that. Yeah, in, in general, I mean, I think we have to find the right balance between like, we can support everything or we won't support everything. Uh, so having having a quick and well-defined way to build your own is the way to go. So we will support just enough to make a good amount of people happy. And for the others, I presume we will have to uh, give them a good like building workflows. And I think Linux Kit is, is very powerful on that because there is a huge community of people that can kind of help us with the building side that we really don't care about that much. We just want it to work and to be simple. So I kind of like the onboarding the Linux kit by its own. Um, yeah, and I'll second that. Um, as I was going and iterating through some of this stuff, it was really trial and error trying to find the right things that were missing. And uh, the smaller size of Linux kit really helped with kind of the iteration cycles and the testing cycles and not having to copy kind of as much data and build as many things to kind of uh, get onto the next attempt really helped out. I think this work is fantastic. Um, thank you to everyone who's worked on it. Uh, I'm curious, has anyone attempted ARM yet? Not with the, not with like Linux kit, but um, there is like everything and, and multi architecture support is built in Linux kit. So there is a new flag called dash, dash there is a flag called dash dash platform that um, allows Linux kit to generate multi arch um, images. So it should be straightforward to do. We didn't try yet, uh, but there is an issue about that open. And along the way, the tool chain supports like cross compilation uh, built in. So it shouldn't be too hard, but we never know until we try. So. I, I can probably give a shot at, at it later this week. I have a Macchiato bin laying around that I can add to my hardware stack here to, nice. to boot. Awesome. That'd be cool. Yeah, I was just talking internally about um, replacing our use of Aussie um, in our test lab to try out the ARM, um, the ARM support for Linux kit or Tinky. Yeah, I think the images that we depend on in the manifest, DHCP and whatnot, they're all built for all architectures, I think. Um, we effectively, we just need to rebuild the kernel and the kernel modules support ARM. Um, but Linux kit has already multi arch default built in. Um, we'll need to build our Tink Docker um, images to be the right architecture as well, but it's, they're just they're, they're pure Go binaries, so there shouldn't be an issue there either. It looks like the the Tinky um, uh, Linux kit. What is it? Uh, Tinky YAML, right? It's using Linux kernel five four three nine. Um, so Presumably, that's got a, a multi-arch kernel, right? That's from upstream. Uh, 
Yes. Okay. But we and like the CI to... seed, the CI pieces that are missing are building a custom kernel and then uploading that to Hub. Yeah, I think also the glue of like how you how we connected the new kernel in the YAML is kind of missing. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, I think what we would need then is a, a process that builds a kernel, uploads a kernel, and then updates the manifests, the, the YAML files with our new kernel. And then that, that effectively would be it. Um, I mean, I don't know how often we plan to actually update the Tinky kernel. I mean, I'd probably follow something like what's built into the Ubuntu kernel to keep it as general purpose for most people's hardware as possible. And then maybe just keep with LTS. If people need other kind of crazy stuff, then that's, they have the tools to, to do it themselves. Yeah, I think that that makes sense. That, that sounds to be the way to go. I also like to kind of to take into car into account what the upstream Linux kit kind of uses is probably um, a good idea. You might want to kind of track that instead of just yep. LTS or just kind of open to whatever open is running. So, well, I've submitted a PR for LTS support up to Linux kit because <laughs> they're running a bit behind. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if we want to necessarily track what upstream's doing in this case because they don't appear to be um, updating on a regular basis. Um, okay. I, ideally, then, we would track, you know, uh, fixes upstream and and make sure that we're rebuilding on a regular basis once we are ready for that. Yeah, I thought that they would be running and tracking LTS, um, and maybe they would have fixes on top of that. So that's kind of where I went, right? But if LTS is is newer than what Linux Kit has, I'd I'd probably you know stay with LTS um, and do that. Mm -hmm. Any other question about this topic? Otherwise we have Dan here that has the next two points of discussion. So you can go. Okay. Um, so uh, recently um, with the help of Mara, um, June Luca and I have added uh, some additional documentation to docs.tinkerbell.org. Um, which should hopefully provide additional environments that people can, or additional documentation around provisioning Tinkerbell with different environments. So um, we recently added uh, using either Equinix Metal as the base uh, infrastructure or your own physical infrastructure, uh, along with QMU as the hypervisor for your Tinkerbell machines to provision on top of. Um, and a full set of instructions for setting up QMU to provide uh, instances, and you can provision all of those uh, through Tinkerbell. Uh, and Jean Luca also wrote documentation around uh, Aussie and all the. So I split the Tinkerbell documentation. Okay. We ha we had a Tink documentation. Uh, I split it in CLI server and workers, and that's it. Cool. The next bits of documentation we're looking at doing are um, kind of twofold. One around uh, actions, what they are, how you use them in a little bit more detail. And the other is actually how to write actions. Um, so what should they do? Best practices around that. Uh, writing your first action kind of thing, um, which should hopefully kind of inspire the end user community to uh, start putting together their own actions to do various uh, things uh, on their clusters. Um, so that's it from a documentation update. The other issue that I wanted to open to the floor is around uh, how we do kegzec. So um, at the moment with uh, Tinky, we can provision an operating system to disk in a variety of different ways. Um, that's fine. We can you know, write file systems or we can stream a raw image and, and write that to disk and 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 do whatever we need to to that disk afterwards. We then have kind of two options in terms of how we move into that newly provisioned operating system. One is to issue a reboot call where the running operating system will stop all programs, issue an ACPI call and the machine will reset and, and reboot up from 
uh, from those discs. The alternative and much faster is to do a kegzec, which is a mechanism in the Linux kernel for it to load a different kernel and RAM disk into memory, drop everything and pivot over to that new kernel and effectively start again. But it doesn't involve discovery of, it doesn't involve um, the BIOS boot process and post and in big servers where it has to do all of this slow config stuff and things like that. Now with a reboot, um, the way that we do that at the moment isn't a particularly nice way, but an action will write the file reboot to a, a directory location where the tink uh, worker um, container is continuously watching the file system for this file to exist. If it sees it, then it can issue the reboot to the OS as it has the correct privileges to do so. Um, it's not the nicest way, but it's quite simple and it, it works for now. Um, there are ways we can improve on that. Now with Kegzec, we need to issue three bits of information. The path of the kernel, the path, in fact, we need more than three actually, the path of the RAM disk and command line flags that we may want to pass, uh, command line arguments that we may want to pass to the kernel. Um, one other thing that we may need to issue is the block device that we need to mount that has both the kernel and the RAM disk on it as well. So uh, the source of information may be slash dev slash SDA3. Uh, it may be then slash boot slash VM uh, Linux, however it's pronounced. Uh, same with the RAM disk and, and same with the command line. Now, we can do that in an action, but we need to come up with a way of passing that information to the tink worker that has the privileges in order then to issue that kegzec command to the running kernel. So we could do the same thing where we write a kegzec file, which has a bunch of comma separated or new line, whatever, which has device path, kernel path, init path, and command line flags. Um, we could open up a socket that sits and listens on a shared path and our kegzec action has a capability of being able to speak over, you know, passing some JSON over that socket and then acting upon it and things like that. Um, at the moment, I don't know the best way of doing it. So I don't know if anybody has any suggestions about that before we go down the path of, of kind of writing um, the way of doing this. I'd like to suggest um, how they do it in Linux kit. If you think about the services section, they allow you to specify namespaces and you can specify commands to run against an image. If we were to mm -hmm. add that to the template actions, then, then we could put, uh, you know, a single container could put itself into the right namespaces to run a kexec and you could pass in the command line args right there. So we'd have a small binary with kexec tools in it and we would pass it would need to mount the block device as well because everything is unmounted between each action. Yeah, we so have volumes it? already, right? So you could do volume mounts already is in the template spec, right? We'd need to mount the block device to a mount to a path is all, which is fine. It's not really a problem. Yeah, it's not, that's not a problem. You don't actually have to mount the block device, right? All you need is a kernel and then RD. Like the way we do this, and honestly, today is we just copy those files, right, into a shared volume directory and then just point that to the kernel, right? And then, and kernel exec just boots from there. Um, like you don't have to boot from the boot device that you intend um, forever and ever, right? Um, we were talking about this yesterday, like in a different context too. And this, what Jacob mentioned, kind of seemed to make a lot of sense, right? Um, um, it's kind of in in the vein of of just being generic kind of functionality and letting letting actions do what they want, right? As opposed to making Tink worker, or or having um, um, be smart enough to, to handle things, or or having like a a, a, a specialized or a, spe um, um, a long running kind of service next to it, right? Um, mm -hmm. it, it solves some of the problems we have. Like, it, well, I mean. I don't know if anybody else wants kexec. We want kexec. Um, I, I mentioned maybe other people do. Um, it also will help us for um, kind of like the way we do provisioning in our setup, um, where the network addresses might need to kind of be DHCP. 
and we can kind of just instead of like we don't support um you know host mode networking or networking configs right and we can kind of extend the workflow for that um or we can just kind of have like you know simple actions and then these super powered ones right um that can just do whatever you want right you're, you're running on the machine anyway um so mm -hmm. there's there's not a whole lot of you know necessary um security kind of um separations i think um so I kind of like that a lot, actually. Um, it kind of flows with the, with the workflow model and with the templates. So we just kind of have to figure out how we want to, um, I mean, it, I don't know if you want to just do like how the services in Linux kit happens where you like specify all the um, all the uh, namespaces and kind of mounts and whatnot, or we just kind of have like a generic, you know, this is a, a super container or super action and, um, and it gets all the privileges and all the capabilities and, and all that. It might just be easier to kind of keep it that way. I think kind of buy into being a super mm -hmm. action. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, sorry, yeah. Gianluca, you're about to say something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think what what I'm thinking about. I mean, this there is an issue open with like part of this discussion, so it's in my mind since a couple of days. And my first concern is that we don't find a clear uh, like place where um, the ownership can can stay. So maybe half of it will stay in the workflow, half the other half will stay in the in all, in one of the OSIs. So it will be uh, hard to replace one of those components if we if we go to the idea that all of those components in theory can be uh, changed. We should probably figure out a good like interface to allow that um but yeah i as i said i'm not really fresh on this topic so i can not, i need to visualize what we are saying to see if this concern is you know there or not uh, but this is the main like one i have right now more than having kxec working because reboot has the same issue like how do we run yeah. reboot now we do like that with a file but it's hard to you know create a, a glue uh, a, uh, you know, consolidate inter. What is the um, that issue that you're talking about? Do you have the link for it? Um, let me find it. I just posted a link in the chat to show an example of how you can kexec or reboot from a Docker image. And basically, that this is where my suggestion of, of augmenting the template um, spec comes into play is where you just want to add different namespaces here. I can't find the issue anymore, so I will add it in the contributor agenda later. I, I'm also adding the one that Jacob shared uh, there, so we would have it as a reference. Yeah, I mean that the, the yeah the K exec that you're doing there is exactly the same thing um, that we we can do with the sync worker at the moment. So, I mean we could we could just have then a, a K exec action um, that has the bits that it needs. If it the if it is if we've done like a, a cloud image where we've written that to disk, then we will need to mount. We'll need to do a part probe on the new disk, and then. We will need to pass in which is the block, which is the correct partition that has that kernel and RAM disk on there in order for kexec to load those into memory before we can do the kexec minus E. For sure. Yeah, so that's fine with me. I'm, I'm kind of happy with that, that way of doing it. Excellent. Um, so I think that's kind of all I really had for the things I wanted to discuss so far this week. Yeah, I will be sure to have any add link an issue or few that we can use to summarize mm -hmm. uh, this topic. And I just want to, if there are no other questions about this topic, I will just briefly go to Action Hub and, and Artifact Hub and call it done for today. Okay. So let's see if my uh, 
network will support that. Uh, so we so we have a new repo called um, Hub in the Thinky organization. Let me see how I can move this. Uh, okay. Uh, and in theory, this is the infrastructure as code repository for uh, the, for the reusable actions. So Dan wrote a couple of them and they are in the actions directory because in theory, as soon as we figure out a good distribution mechanism for workflows, we can have a workflow one. And we have Ruth Ayo and uh, um, something else that I don't remember and image disk, image to disk. So as you can see, the layout is like the same for all the other, uh, all of them, like every action is self-contained. So there is a version and a readme. The readme is used um, in the CI to generate the spec that artifact have uh, reads to, you know, expose the action. So if you want to have the new action, you can create, you can follow the same foldering and there is a Docker file and a make file that in theory will be used by automation to build the image, push them and create the, art the artifact. Right now, the CICD works only for the artifact hub manifest generation. That it's almost like a, it's a static file that you, it's a static website that you can find. Uh, well, Um, that you can find in the artifact manifest uh, branch. And um, yeah, it's just a bunch of YAML that it's, you know, um, continuously pulled from artifact hub to create the, um, the HTML file. So if you, artifact hub is a um, website built by the CNCF community that um, shows like artifact from various projects like Helm charts uh, or uh, like Falco rules and so on. So right now the two that we have are here and you can see each one of them and the readme gets used as a documentation website and from there you can get the actual Quay images that contains the, that you can run as an action. So this is kind of the solution we are currently using for um, reusable action. So the repository is, is there, so you can even use them and try them yourself or uh, write other one if you have, uh, if you want. And I think that's it from my side. Um, there is a bit of work in the CI CD part and automation. So if you are curious and you have time, you want to help, let me know, I appreciate it. Uh, otherwise, at some point, I'm sure I will automate myself. Right now, there is like every pull request you open kind of need like my hands on it because I have to build the image and push them to Quay. Um, the artifact generation is made automatically, but the actual push to Quay is a minor step for now. Um, but I will get there. Uh, Gia, actually, uh, not sure, but I think uh, as you as I saw the action YAML template uh, i think uh, there is the ip is hard coded right for the uh, nodes yeah the the readme is um yeah it's a document it's like like the documentation so you can copy yeah, okay. your workflow right. and replace yeah. it yeah so as you said that uh, if anybody is free so i am like kind of uh, mostly uh, Kind of free you can say uh, so i can contribute so if we can get in touch maybe uh, tomorrow yeah i'm here late all day yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah so yeah i mean as as soon as we are waiting a, a few i mean just a couple of days or whatever, I'm, I'm not sure. It's mainly based on the amount of con the contribution we get, but uh, ideally before like thinking about how to share full workflows, we want to validate if the, you know, all the process works for single actions. As soon as we are confident with that, we will have workflows. Um, yeah, right. If you, one of the, you know, something we have to figure out is 
before had in workflows is how we want to build them because now it's you know it's a full directory that we may contain actions that has to be built from the workflows directory or we may contain actions that are that need to be pulled from elsewhere so all that part has to be figured out first and i i presume it's a benefit for the old like think about community not really related to reusable workflows so how do we yeah, right we have a good packaging now. So, I mean, we have a clear way to do packaging. You create a YAML and you create a bunch of subdirectories that can work, but the way you make it a proper like artifact is something that we can think about, we should think about. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. So I'll get in touch with you to, uh, like tomorrow, maybe in the afternoon, mm -hmm. he, that is new, your morning. Whenever you're available, I will ping you on Slack and then we can have a call or chat or whatever. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And this is the last topic of the day. So if you uh, discuss in the email group, yeah, that's true. I'm just gonna. I mean, they, ideally, I just, I just want to collect like a few uh, ideas and somebody that can actually help me to write like something down, because um, it's not always easy to bring down my mind altogether. So, uh, but yeah, it will come in form of an issue and in the um, email, contributor email that we have at some point, just need time to translate it. Um, so I think that's it from our side today. There is no topics, last minute topics added in the contributor meeting. So we should be good. Anybody else wants to add anything? Otherwise, I think we can call it done for today. Three, two, one. Thank you for coming. So talk to you in two weeks, I presume. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Hey, thank you, everyone. See y'all. Cheers. Bye-bye.